Hi everyone, my name is Dawn McCaw and I am the Career Specialist for Fine and Performing Arts and I'm here with um, an amazing alum, not today, Shauna Keating and I'm just going to bring her on in a minute. And so yeah, another episode of Arts Chat. I'm, I'm glad that you could um, watch us or join on live. Okay. Here we go. All right, so, and I'll just introduce her. See if she, when she comes on. Thank you all for, I see you joining us. Okay. Hi, Shauna. Hi. Hi, thanks so much for joining on. I know you have a super busy day, so we really appreciate your time. Yeah, and it looks like you're outside on this beautiful day. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great. A big part of working remotely, that is nice, is being yeah. able to, on a nice day, take the computer outside yeah. uh, towards the end of the day. Before the rain comes this weekend. <laughs> mm. Okay, so yeah, just going to give you a, a brief intro and then just jump in, fill anything in. And um, okay, so Shauna Keating, who graduated in 2016 with a BFA in graphic design. And Shauna is a design engineer specializing in design systems and accessibility and she currently is design manager at Trust. So thank you so much, Shauna. I'm just gonna jump in. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your position and you know what brought you to wanting to do graphic design? Yeah, so I'm one of those people who's really, really lucky in life and kind of knew what I wanted to be when I grew up at a young age. And I read in like a reading book in one of my classes in like fifth grade about what a graphic designer was. And I was like, oh, that's me, that's what I gotta do. Like I had at the time been like really into making stuff on like Microsoft Paint and was like, oh, I, I, this is, I love the computer art. I just wanna make stuff on the computer all the time. I love doing art, love computers, let's do it. Um, I don't think I really fully understood how expansive and interdisciplinary design was at the time. Uh, I was going into it kind of being like, oh, that person like makes books and logos. Uh, and as I got closer and closer through my academic journey as a child and started thinking about studying graphic design, like picking out BFA programs, um, I didn't really know which particular thing I wanted to go into or where I'd end up necessarily. I just knew I wanted to do design. So I ended up going to New Paltz partially because I really liked the idea of being in a really strong arts program within a university because I still wanted access to like other academic stuff, which was a good choice. Because while I was there, I ended up also taking a lot of computer science classes and learning how to code and getting really involved in like technology and web development kind of stuff while I was studying graphic design. And I was able to kind of strategically bring those together to enter the UX field like right away after graduating with a graphic design degree. And for people who lack context, uh, UX stands for user experience, and that's people that design and build like apps and websites most traditionally, but can be other stuff too. That's great, thank you. Um, let's see, what would you say you're currently working on or you know, on something that maybe is coming up projects? Yeah, so I currently work at a company called Trust and we, for the most part, get assigned to contracts with federal government agencies. And the one I'm on right now is actually my favorite one I've ever worked on. Uh, I'm working on an employee portal for um, the United States Space Force. So kind of think like my new pulse, but for people who are what they're actually called, they're called guardians that work for the Space Force. Wow. Super interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's something I, I just wouldn't have guessed that a graphic design BFA would be doing it's just you know it's it's great it's just you know different yeah. I love that. Um, I'll say with that like having the visual design skills from learning graphic design is my starting point with design has been like a really good asset to me in the field of UX and web development is it's kind of a cool industry in that like people come from all kinds of backgrounds a lot of people I work with actually don't have a college degree at all um, wow. but for me knowing I wanted to do this at the age I did, like it was a good path for me. Um, but like, like the other designers at the company I work at, some of them 
have an associate's degree. Some of them have master's degrees. Some people are like me. There's a handful of us that have a BFA in graphic design. But I'll say one thing that's nice about having done graphic design in undergrad is that it can be hard to develop develop those visual design skills. Um, it's something that you can't just like learn in a boot camp in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And having that background mm -hmm. coming into this career path was really, really helpful. Yeah, that's great. Makes you an asset, definitely. Uh, let's see. Could you share anything with uh, current students about um, any entrepreneurial work you've done? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say this is necessarily entrepreneurial, but what I will say has been a really, really big thing for me, especially, I didn't provide this context before, but I live not too far from campus in Kingston, and I have stayed in the Hudson Valley for my entire adult life. Like, I never, like, left to go to, like, one of those, like, big tech epicenter type cities. Uh, it's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. um, and one reason why I've been able to kind of stay here is for the whole beginning of my career, I pretty much only worked for local companies in the Hudson Valley. Um, and why that was possible was because I got really involved in like local groups around the different things I was interested in. I made sure that when I was a New Paltz student, I was going off campus and finding events where I could make connections with professionals in the area. Um, like most of the internships I did while I was in school and the job I entered when I graduated, I got those jobs not from an online listing, but from actually meeting people and getting to know them. And a couple of times just flat out asking them, like, I know you're not hiring, but like, would you be open to uh, take me on? Or I know you're not hiring a graphic design intern right now or a web design intern, but have you ever considered having one? Like two of the internships I did while I was in school, that was how I ended up getting them, like just like cold emailing or one in particular, I just showed up at their table at the jobs and internships fair on campus and was like, yeah. hey, I know you said you're looking for computer science majors, but I am currently taking this class in web development. I'm learning how to code in HTML and CSS. Would you be open to taking somebody with more of a design background and doing like front end development, not just back end? And uh, they ended up giving me a chance. And that was the internship I did my junior year. And I even got credit for it and got paid at the same time, which I think people don't realize you can do. Yes, yes, that's true. People are not always aware that you can get paid and get credit. They're not um, at, all. And yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you for sharing that. We, you know, it's such a sometimes a hard concept to wrap your head around that you can, even if something isn't advertised, ask a company like, would you like to have a graphic design intern or do you have a position, but that you can create things that aren't there. And yeah. I, I mean, Everybody wants graphic design. Everybody wants to market whatever they're doing. So it <laughs> it makes sense, you know, that, I do think that so. you can just ask. It's important to note, though, like I tried to be honest with myself, like when I was doing that stuff, it was a different time. It was like pre-COVID world. And something mm -hmm. I've been thinking about a lot, especially because I teach at New Paltz as an adjunct. I teach a design for the web class. And the students are always asking me, like, how do you get internships? Like, how do you do this stuff? the second half of my career I think has informed that more as I switched over to remote work that you can kind of take that idea and that principle of like advocating for yourself and making connections and apply it into the digital space as well so like the example I gave was I was like going to events physically and like walking up to people and being like hey you have a company here in New Paltz that's walking distance from campus I'd love to do an internship at your company how's that possible um, I think a lot of those smaller agencies in the Hudson Valley have it's, there's been a decline in how many there is, and I'm not going to sugarcoat that. But I do see a lot of people having more success in kind of making it in that remote space with the internship opportunities mm -hmm. and stuff by not just limiting themselves to the job listings they see online and like adding people on LinkedIn and talking to them and asking if they're willing to hop on a Zoom and help talk to you about your career options. Um, in general, whenever I, I'm now getting a million of these messages, <laughs> whenever I get messages from people who are like, I'm just starting out with UX design, I'd go to New Paltz and I'd love to get some advice. Like, I had somebody do that a year ago who was a psychology student, and I ended up being able to pull some strings and get her into my class oh, um, and be able great. to, like, mentor her more directly. So, like, you get 0% of the things you never ask for, and... I'm sure that if you're watching this and you're like, oh, let me look on Google Maps and like see what agencies are around here. I 
know pretty much for sure that the number is not as high as it was when I was a student. But if you see somebody out there in the world, especially if they are a New Paltz alumni in general, we're all really willing to help out the current students. Yeah. And you yeah. can always like send a LinkedIn message and be like, hey, how do you do XYZ, XYZ thing? Like, do you know anything about this company? And like utilizing that network, even if it's not somebody you've met in real life. At the end of the day, we all want to help each other. Yeah, thank you. That's great. You said something. You get 0% of things you never asked for. I love that. I love that. So, yeah, it is true. We, you know, sometimes talk to students and say, don't um, rule yourself out. Like, don't be the person that rejects you. Yeah. <laughs> to put, put it out there and see what happens. Um, yeah, thank you so much. What um, are some administrative skills that you've developed that, you know, or skills also that you need in your job that maybe you didn't even think about when you were an undergrad? Yeah, I think stuff that, that can be really, really important when entering into, like, let's just talk about the tech industry at large is like getting uncomfortable, getting comfortable with lack of like just like things being clear, like there's a lot of ambiguity in the world of software. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it, a lot of the time, you're not just gonna be handed a list of list of tasks. And you kind of have to like figure out what needs to be done on your own and kind of then put things in front of people and say like, what are our priorities here? These are all the things we can do. Um, because especially in the space of working for government clients, a lot of times they're not super well versed in building software. and we often have to come up with ideas of suggestions for things that could be our starting point. Because like even sometimes where I work, like people might come to us with a problem, but don't even know what they need to solve that problem. And we'll do something called discovery and framing with them uh, to kind of like help assess what they're trying to build something to solve and work together to kind of then figure out possible solutions before we even start building anything. Sounds good. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's see. When you were an undergrad, were you involved in any organizations on campus or leadership? So you might not like this answer, but no, not really. Uh, I, I dabbled a little bit with Design Society and uh, I liked what everyone was doing. And I do think that especially um, for design students and I'll give a shout out to Design Society. If you're in a different major and design is of interest of you, that is something that is open to people all over campus, no matter what their major is. Uh, a lot of the members are in the graphic design program, but they definitely welcome people from other majors. And that might be a, an opportunity to explore design a bit further. For me, I think it's part of the fact that like I came in, I was really, really lucky and my high school had graphic design classes and I was somewhat far mm -hmm. along when I got to New Paltz um, that I started doing internships and working quite early and yeah. didn't really have the bandwidth in clubs as much. Um, yeah. But that's not necessarily to say that clubs aren't valuable because they can also see for people that are in like more classes, like let's say you're taking like five or six classes a semester, you don't have the bandwidth to work or do an internship at the same time. A potential right. way to fill that gap and like work on your network because your classmates are still your network is joining those kinds of clubs around the areas of interest. So like, I know there's like the computer science club and like they like code mm -hmm. stuff and build stuff. And you got uh, design society over in OLB that they're doing stuff with design and it can create opportunities for people who are not in design classes or might want to do the graphic design BFA, but don't know much about it yet uh, to kind of dip their toe in and see what it's all about. That's, that's great advice. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, that any major can really join that. Um, and, and yeah, you're gaining experience through internships or working. So clubs yeah. is just one way, but yeah, that, that's great. Kind of I love that your high school has, oh, do you uh, see so people? I, oh, no. oh, I was just, um, no, I was, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I was going to say though, I kind of took a 180 on that after I graduated and mm -hmm. got like a lot more involved in community organizations like uh, and that was something that was like really important to me in my career, especially when I was starting out that like I was really involved with the Hudson Valley Tech Meetup uh, for the last ever since I graduated. Actually, I have been a board member for AIGA Upstate New York. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm just finishing up my fifth year of presidency with that. Uh, So like volunteering and being involved with organizations in general, I do think it is valuable. It definitely was very helpful to my network. And I'm sure that a lot of the clubs on campus kind of serve a similar purpose. Right, right. You know, when we're talking about um, connecting and you mentioned LinkedIn, are you on the Orange and Blue Network? Yes. Yes, Yes, I am. And I have I have gotten students message me with questions about okay. UX before, and I do I do answer them. <laughs> great, great. Thank you, thank you. Because you know sometimes students want to know, you know how can I connect with Shauna, and it's like orange and blue. <laughs> and uh, sometimes students don't know about it, but it is a great platform for current students and and our alumni as well. So I'm glad you're on that. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, if you could speak to your younger self. What advice would you have? The one of the largest pieces of advice for me in undergrad would be to not worry about my grades so much because mm-hmm. I can tell you this: in the last seven years, uh, in zero job interviews, have I ever been asked about what my grades are or were or what my GPA was? Nobody cares, and I used to worry about it so much. And I think I would have part of the reason why you go to college like yeah you want to get good grades you want to be successful but I don't think it's worth staying up all night or panicking about a b plus or an a minus kind of a thing like I I think it can the world of academia can put a lot of pressure on people and -hmm. especially if you don't necessarily have intentions of going to grad school there's a lot more you can get out of uh, like just speaking to new pulse like there's a lot Better than just grades. Um, actually, the thing that is going to be most important at the other side of your degree is not just your degree. It's actually one of the smallest little parts of your resume. It's the skills you have, the connections you have. If you're a designer, it's what's in your portfolio. So, like, I I'm somebody who worked quite a lot while I was in school, and I couldn't have grades as high as people that were just in school full time and just doing school. But at the the other side of it for in some of those cases like I had a lot more client work in my portfolio and when it came to doing interviews and stuff that is actually what people cared about more and so I, I just maybe not viewing grades as the only metric of success while in school yeah I think that's great advice it's it's you know it's kind of a a mix of its grades but it's your portfolio, the experience, and depending on the field. And then, like you said, if you're not going to graduate school, then that takes a little bit of the pressure off. Um, But yeah, I think people sometimes can get really hyper-focused on one area, like grades, and not realize how important experience is, that experiential piece, whether it's work or an internship, clubs, just everything together so it's great to point that out and that's really for any major to you know get rounded out experience in addition to your academics so let's see what would you say when you first um started working after graduation what was an obstacle that you know you had to kind of figure out i know there's a lot right (laughs) i I know i I, I, one really comes to mind because I remember the summer I I'm somebody that was really hyper focused on my metric what success looked like to me going into my last semester of my senior year was do I have a job when I graduate and I was like really push for that and I did achieve that but what I look back on it and I say this to my students a lot like you don't have to start a job right away after you graduate if for whatever reason you're able to avoid that outcome actually I recommend it because especially with junior level positions, uh, they don't come with a lot of vacation time. And I I dealt with a lot of burnout in that first few months of like working full time. And Mm -hmm. I think too, like especially for people that go through a BFA program, we get really weird relationships with our work because especially for those of us that are holding jobs while being full time students, um, you're going to class all day, you're going to work, you're coming back to the studio and staying in there till the wee hours of the night. And not like for me, I was averaging like four or five hours of sleep a night when I was a student, which was not healthy. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> but, but I never had like a good relationship with mer- work models for me as a student. Mm-hmm. And then when I came out the other side, I kept with that pattern 
for like a very long time. And I went and was particularly incompatible with the lifestyle of somebody working at like a studio agency environment. And I, when I first started out, I was 22 and I just wasn't very good at setting boundaries. And I ended up working like more than full time all the time and not getting paid overtime for it because I just was like, you mean you're going to pay me to work and I don't have to pay to be here? Like my, my <laughs> priorities are all over the place. So I, if I could go back and do it again, I would have put my start date back a bit further um, because that, that was something I had control over. I only gave myself two weeks after graduation. Mm -hmm. um, and I also would have really held myself to only working 40 hours a week. Um, and being like, no, just because you're not in college and like paying to be here doesn't mean you don't deserve rights. <laughs> so right. I, I think like that was it was like a self-created situation too. Like yeah. I, I just think I came from doing like this insane double life of full-time student and part-time employee to just having less on my plate and just not being good at being like, oh, I don't have to actually do things when I come home from work at all. I can just enjoy life. Uh, I think yeah. a lot of people who start a job right after college really struggle with that. Yeah, I think you're, yeah, you're right in that. And there's some things that you're always kind of assessing, you know, what works, what doesn't, and, and seeing what other people are doing. Cause yeah, if you're in kind of a pattern of what you did undergrad, I think I was the same way. Um, so that, that really makes sense. You have a lot of things, right? You can look back and, and tell your, your younger self. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, and then negotiating a start date, it's it's interesting. Like, if you can push it back, that's good. But also, I think, you know, if you start applying before you graduate, then that takes that stress off if you get something. So it's kind of, yeah. you know. I, I mean, like, something that was cool and, like, how I worked that transition out was, and I, yeah. I give this recommendation to folks a lot, was I started, I did an internship, like, the second semester of my senior year, good old good old round of field work in art. That's how you get credit in the fine arts department at New Paltz. Um, and something that I did was once I had been there for a couple months in that internship, I was like, hey, I like working here. What if I didn't leave? Have you guys considered that? And they were like, that's an option? Cool. And they were like, we'll think about it. And so it was like an ongoing conversation then for the like eight weeks leading up to my thesis show. Um, and and I think it was about a month before I graduated, we kind of agreed that I was going to stay, worked out my salary, which is why I'm saying like I could have just been like, hey, guys, I'm going to take three weeks off before I actually start and not just two. Right. Or I'll take four yeah. weeks off because they asked me and I was like, oh, two weeks, yeah. I guess. Let's go. So that's why I'm saying in particular, like also that's yeah. just a general note about life. All job offers are negotiable. Um, anytime in life you get a job offer, you should counter offer for more money. That, that is something I wish I did more when I was younger. Um, now it is something I I always do. But I had to have somebody else tell, tell me that. that you, right, they, right. That's just their first offer. You can ask for another one. They won't rescind it just because you ask for more money. Right, right. And not to plug the CRC, but I'm going to plug the CRC. If you have questions like that, you can always talk to me. Um, and of course, I'm Dawn, the FMPA liaison. So I, I agree, Shauna. I learned a lot of things about like insurance and retirement after the fact. And maybe because I just wasn't focused on paying attention to that. And some of those decisions really do impact you later on. So if, you know, students have any questions, it's always good to have a conversation. So is there anything else that you want to add? Or um, you've, you've helped a lot. You've mentioned a lot of different things in your experience. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think one other really big takeaway from my academic experience that, like, still, oh, my gosh, sitting outside does have bugs sometimes, <laughs> um, that still, like, has, like, really informed my path and my career is, like, just because you're in a major program or a certain minor or something, that's not the only thing you ever get to do. In fact, most of the, I'm actually one of very few people I work with that has a word shared between my job title and my degree title. Uh, a lot of people I work with studied things that have absolutely nothing to do with design. So like if you're somebody who is a senior or even a recent grad that is like, oh my God, like I studied this thing and now I don't want to do it. That's not the end of the road. In particular, with like the tech industry, 
there are a lot of people without degrees at all. There are a lot of people that studied things that have nothing to do with technology. Um, and a lot of the skills from other jobs and stuff can be transferred into technology. So like, I remember when I was first applying for like UX internships and trying to convince people to hire me for that kind of work, I really leveraged my multiple years of customer service experience because I had before I got start working as a designer making money doing that. I my freshman and sophomore year at New Paltz was like the person who answered the phone and sold season passes at a ski mountain and the person who would take your ticket at the New York Renaissance Fair. Um, and something I would use, I'd use that to like leverage to get into the field of UX. I was like, well, if I can deal with like, I'm used to taking people's feedback and like changing processes around it. And like, I'm willing to do that in like a high stakes environment where I have to like physically be with that person and like adapt to user, like user feedback in real, real time. And so it's just like, if you don't necessarily match every skill for the thing you want to do, like think about what you do know how to do and like how it might align to what you're interested in. Yeah, th thank you for saying that. That's great. And I think it's helpful when students are in these jobs that they're like, I'm never going to do this. Why? I know I'm getting a paycheck, but those transferable skills. And I feel the same way, like my jobs in retail customer service, people aren't always bringing their best selves to the establishment that you're working. <laughs> and, um, you know, those customer service skills, if you can do that, those stay with you. So that is great, great adv advice. We've had quite a few people jump on today. So thank you, everyone, for joining. And, and thank you so much, Shauna. Yeah, of course. And I hope you have a good weekend. Thanks for taking the time. All right. Bye, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Thank Sean. you.